There is a major sweat spot on Christopher's tummy right now. Always. Always. Like this whole trip, it's just been, there's like a, a stain of Duncan right here. It's mostly Christopher, it's not Duncan. Don't blame the baby. Good morning, everyone. Right? Is it a good morning? Yes. Welcome to our series on Italy. Today, we are taking a day trip away from Rome, and we are going to Pompeii. You wanna go to Pompeii? Pompeii is a place that had a big natural disaster, which was really sad for the people that lived there, but it preserved the city in a way that allows us to study the history of it in a really interesting, cool way. Huh. We are working with Live Italy today, which is a tour company that goes all over Italy and can show you all sorts of stuff. If you ever plan a trip to Italy, they can help you out. They're giving us this tour today. You like Italy? Yeah. You've been having fun on this trip? Yeah. He's been growing up so much this trip. He started walking, he's been talking a lot more. Hmm. way to Pompeii we stopped in Naples which is the birthplace of modern pizza and we're at a place called Aqualina that place and we're gonna eat some pizza and we're right here up against the water I can't believe how beautiful it is here are you excited about pizza yeah I'm gonna get cheese cheese yeah it sounds good do you want pizza let's be fair I'm the one you do oh good okay. one great thing about this place is that they have gluten-free pizza and pasta. You're about to have your first Italian pizza. You want to tell them what you ordered for the toppings? <laughs> Shrimp and squid and octopus and tomato sauce and cheese. Why does she get squid? Like. I don't know, I would never do that. Tomato, cherry tomatoes, squids, octopus, prawns, seafood. Seafood. Bailey is going big. <laughs> it's really good. It's gonna be delicious. It's good as like octopus, Parker. Parker, you know when we have calamari? Yeah. That's squid. <laughs> is that his mind being blown? <laughs> I'm trying to get the stuff out of the shells so I can help with this. How's your pizza, Duncan? How is it, Bailey? Mmm. Parker, did you eat the squid? Mm -hmm. Is it pretty it? good? Would you order squid now? So the motto of Live Italy Tours is don't just visit Italy, live it. And Jacob is perfectly modeling that at the moment. What is your shirt covered in? Pizza. Nice. Not just pizza, sauce. It's pizza sauce. <laughs> Here's the kitchen and action. Hello. <laughs> that pizza was so good. I had uh, olives and tomatoes and capers and some sort of vegetable that I couldn't recognize, but it tasted really good. So my pizza was really good. How's your pizza? Good. The food was awesome. It's really, yeah. really neat here. It's yeah, just like, it's, really it's very hot, but it's like a very cozy, warm feeling. Like I wanna get in that ocean. Like I wanna come back and dedicate my life to the ocean. And Bailey ate most of the ocean. <laughs> How was it? Was it delicious? Yeah, it's, it's the best. The best? 
the best pizza she's ever had. She's had a lot of pizza too. So originally, this was the coastline right here, and now it's like a kilometer back behind us is where the ocean starts. But they used to dock ships right here in front of the city gate, which is this thing that's behind me. So apparently this entire area was under 20 feet of ash, pumice, and stuff that the volcano dropped. This museum in Pompeii is all artifacts from one house and it's the house of a merchant who was very wealthy and we can see a lot of things that lasted because he had bronze and marble and frescoes. And they call this house the house of the golden bracelet because of this bracelet. It's gorgeous, isn't it? This next part is hard to look at. These are the actual plaster casts of the bodies of humans who died in 79 AD from this volcanic eruption. It's what makes Pompeii so incredible that we have preservation of the people and their figures. This is a family and there are children. So if this bothers you, fast forward to that time if you don't want to see this. But this is historical and it's really, really amazing. But it is hard to look at. Let's talk about how these were made. When Mount Vesuvius erupted, it shot tephra, or volcanic material, 21 miles into the air. When it came down, it covered the people of Pompeii. All the organic material of the people, including their clothes and their muscle and their skin, it all deteriorated, creating a void where the person used to be. An archeologist named Giuseppe Fiorelli injected those voids with plaster. After the plaster hardened, they removed all the rubble around the people, and we were left with these plaster casts which show us the detail of the clothes and the expressions of people who died almost 2,000 years ago. It is amazing to try to comprehend that this is a city from 79 AD. As I walk through here, all I'm trying to do is wrap my mind around that concept. This is the first time in my life I've ever been able to really walk through something like this. And I think most people would say the same thing. Like, you don't normally walk through an ancient city that's been preserved for 2,000 years. It's really incredible. Surprise! Surprise! One thing that's super fascinating about this place is even though it's huge and so much of it has been uncovered, there's a bunch that hasn't been uncovered. Like this mound of dirt here goes back up and out and it's all more city that's under the ground that they haven't had a chance to excavate yet. So there's even more city beyond the massive amount of city that's here for us to check out. So this area here was the thermal bath area. The lawn was like a gymnasium where they would do wrestling and other games. And then back here were baths for the women. And back here was a bath for the men. This area was a swimming pool for swimming activities. And this was an area for a game that was similar to bowling. This is an original roof that survived the volcanic ash. And this is the women's, sort of like a locker room or changing room for going into the bath. These areas would be where they kept their things. This is where they might sit to get changed. And they used to do graffiti on their lockers even in those times. So this is where the hottest bath would have been. And the floors are really beautiful. They're a mosaic floor. And then over here, we have the original ceiling still and a window. Here was a fountain that was actually cool. And this was the only cool water the women had in the baths because they generally only had warm or hot water to protect their fertility. What do you think of all this so far? Amazing. Do you want to go check out the boys' bathroom? Yeah, and that's it. And bye. It's enormous. It's like Ginormous. Like, you have to check out this. Ginormous. Oh my goodness, the ceilings. I know, it's so And this is the cold bath. This is where the men would have mild temperature 
water. So there was a lot more damage to this area. The ceilings didn't make it, the floors didn't make it. So down here, the hot air and steam would have been circulated to rise up and help heat the baths and keep this room nice and toasty. I've always found it really interesting that they used to have shared baths. Seems like kind of a fun system. I mean, obviously you had to be a little comfortable about being naked with everybody, but I don't know, it just seems interesting that that was all communal. I know some people would think it was kind of gross, but if you looked in the beginning of the women's locker room, there was an area where you'd get off like excess dirt before going into the bath. Kind of like that shower before going into the pool roll. So I don't know. I like it. I think it's kind of fun. You're gonna start doing it? Start <laughs> community open, bath? Open up a community bath. I feel like that's what raising small children is like <laughs> most of the time anyway. One thing that is really surprising me is that this place is massive. But you'll go down this street, there are shops and homes, and then there's another street and it just keeps going all the way down here and all the way down here. I totally a large city and I knew that but I didn't think that's what we would actually be seeing. Like, I feel like I thought we would see one of these small blocks and it would be like, yeah, those are the ruins of Pompeii, but it's, it's giant. It's just massive, the loss that must have happened here. And it's very tragic. We're going into one of the better preserved homes from Pompeii and it's completely amazing already. The owner of this house was the father-in-law of the Emperor Nero. He was the father of Emperor Nero's second wife. Water would come from there, would collect and then he would have his own private bath in there. Hey buddy, are you in Pompeii? So this is an area where you could buy food. Each of these little holes in the counter would have something like a soup or just a, a mass of food that you would get served, kind of cafeteria style. I'm trying to think of what examples they might be eating. I don't know, but think of the ancient version of like mac and cheese. <laughs> So if you didn't notice our desperation <laughs> just then, it is very, very hot here. And it's just kind of been a game of finding the shade and sitting in the shade and that's where we've been learning the most from our guide. It's just in little spots in the shade and they do have them, you know, all over the place. So. It's not that bad. Like I think it was much hotter when we went and visited Plymouth like in August a couple years ago, but it's definitely very hot and people around us are like, you can tell they're like, getting warm. The size of the place kind of like catches you by surprise. So yeah. like I drank all my water right away and I was like, oh, there's a lot more to see. <laughs> like we're gonna be walking for a while. Yeah. Total cobblestone, so if you are concerned about mobility issues, I wouldn't even do like a stroller here, I don't think. It would have to be like a very all-terrain wheeled stroller and I think it would just be a hassle. Christopher is very, very tired from carting Duncan around in this thing but I also think it's kind of the only way. There is a major sweat spot on Christopher's tummy right now. Always. Always. Like this whole trip, it's just been, there's like a, a stain of Duncan right here. It's mostly Christopher, it's not Duncan. Don't blame the baby. It's in a Duncan shape. Oh, it's Duncan shape. Here's an example of some of the cobblestones. This is kind of everywhere. There are some sidewalks that look like this. This is the smoother area. And again, it's ruins, so you're gonna have things like that. So there are smoother sidewalks that look like this. Those smoother sidewalks are there, and there are some ramps, but I, I would say it would be very difficult. They are trying to make it possible. If you have a mobility issue and it's, it's rough for you, then I would say that this would be I think one of the harder trips that I've seen so far in Europe. I think you can enter from the backside and you don't have to go up that big hill at the beginning. And there are areas where it is smoother, but it, you're gonna be a lot more limited in where you can go and what you can explore. And this tour was all done through Live Italy Tours. They can also get you out here to Pompeii. It was a two and a half hour drive. If I was traveling normally, I probably would have tried to figure out some sort of train system and would have failed. <laughs> or I would have just given up and gone, eh, it's too far away. But I love that they offer a driver who will take you safely 
to a place that's two and a half hours away and make it possible to still have a tour guide and still be able to visit somewhere that's so far from the city that was like the main city we were visiting. It would have been really hard to get out here with all the kids. Really hard. Really it's hard. not, I mean, at least from our perspective of not knowing what we're doing at all, we just would have not done it. This was cool that we were able to work with the same company who was doing all our things in Rome and also be able to go to a faraway city and explore the things we really wanted to do because I really, really wanted to see Pompeii and I didn't think it was ever gonna be possible. Mama. And Duncan's behind me spitting water. Waste. <laughs> Waste. That's how he's keeping cool. That's his strategy. He's just spewing water all over himself and Christopher. <laughs> this giant area behind me would be the gym of gladiators. It's where the gladiators would live and train. And then over here, this is the amphitheater where the gladiators would have their fights. It's similar to the Colosseum in Rome. It is smaller, but I'm surprised to see it here. It's amazing to see it built in a city. I thought the Colosseum was like the only place where gladiators would go. So I definitely learned something new today. I learned a lot of new things, but like that, that stuck out as something I thought I knew that I was just wrong about. I have a new really cool fact for you. This is actually the very first gladiator amphitheater that was ever built out of all these gladiator amphitheaters that I'm just learning were built. So here you go, even before the Coliseum, there was this guy. So we're going into the amphitheater where, where it was covered in ashes, so. And what did they do in here? Uh, fights. Who would fight? Uh, like, amphitheaters? Gladiators. Gladiators. Staring at the edge of the water, no, as long as I can remember, never really knowing why. Okay, we are about to head out of Pompeii, but I wanted to show you this map. It really shows how big this city is. This is the the amphitheater we were just in where the gladiators fight and these spots here, up here, and here still unexplored and this is all the city. It's so big. We just went through the gates and I noticed this. I didn't see this when I was coming in. These are baby points. There are three different baby points throughout where you can take your baby and change them or nurse them or just have kind of a safe haven spot for the baby. We didn't need it though. It was it was pretty pretty smooth sailing with Duncan today. He did a good job. Those plaster casts that we showed in the very beginning, they have a whole bunch of them on display out here in this building here and the one across the courtyard there. And it's so, it's heartbreaking because it was these people's last moment and they're just, it just kind of, it happened so fast. And it was such a, such a devastating moment in history. Hi, let's talk about what we learned today. We learned why someone would get squid on their pizza because they're trying to eat the entire ocean. We learned that the men's bathhouse is ginormous. And finally, we learned that Jessica does not know the mac and cheese equivalent of the ancients. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>